Welcome everyone to the Retail Corner Podcast. Today we have with you guys none other than Ron Thurston. Ron has been head of stores at Bonobos. He was vice president of stores, and let me say this right, Yves Saint Laurent. And he was also vice president at Intermix. And most importantly, right now, he's the number one best-selling author in Amazon for his book, Retail Pride. How are you doing today, Ron? Excellent. Thank you, Carlos. So coming to you live from the coast of Oregon, uh, which is, it's a beautiful morning here. So thank you for having me on the show. No, thank you for, for being with us. It's a pleasure. Ron, first and foremost, before we really get into a lot of questions, I, I want to know how is the transition being an internal retail employee, obviously an executive, and transitioning out to becoming a public figure, right? Because usually it's the opposite way, right? Executives try, try to be very hidden away, not to get bomb guarded by vendors, et cetera, et cetera. So how is that transition for you and what inspired you to go that route? Oh, it's such an interesting question. Um, it, my, I think my mission, my like journey toward this more public figure, speaking, hosting, traveling, is because I spent three years working in stores and saw how hard people work and how proud they were of what they do and the importance that retail plays in their life and that sometimes that the the recognition for that hard work or their careers that they choose in retail uh, and the importance that the role that they play in the economy um, is underrepresented and undervalued. And so I wanted to first write, write a book, The Retail Pride, um, The Guide to Celebrating Your Accidental Career, which then, you know, and I was still running stores and, and um, it was part of my journey toward doing this was writing this book, publishing it, having this voice that is about celebrating the people that work in brick and mortar retail. The only way I knew that I could do it was to leave New York City and travel in an Airstream with my husband and see the country and meet people that work in the field and hear their stories and share their stories and build um, this kind of ecosystem of pride when it comes to working in retail. And it's been an incredible journey so far. Oh, I bet it has. No, and, and I agree with you so much, right? That the store employees play a pivotal importance in the retail world, right? Brick and border is still about 80 to 85% of the entire business of every retailer. So, I mean, absolutely. And very, very many times they're underappreciated or underpaid or overworked, right? And, and I think part of that customer service is really what makes the clothing or the product move into the consumer, right? Um, yeah. And so... With this project that you've started the book and everything, can you tell us a little bit more about the project within itself? Like, how did you start writing the book? What, I'm sure there was a specific instance or problem or issue that you guys kind of overcome as a team and then maybe that sparked the whole inspiration of it. Ah, uh, that's interesting. Uh, so I, it was summer of 2019 and I just came to this moment where I said, I have to find a way to recognize the hard work, as I mentioned earlier, and the, and the important careers, uh, because I do, I'm leading my own organization at, at Intermix. You know, I have a 400 person team and that's great, but you know, one out of four people in this country work in retail. It's millions and millions of people. And so I, I said, you know, I love leading my team, but there's a bigger message here that needs to be shared. And when you really start digging into it and had, as someone who's led a lot of conferences, created a lot of content, there has never been a book written specifically for people who work in retail. And there are books about retail. There are books mm -hmm. about the industry. There are, there's lots of information and there are a lot of podcasts and there's a lot of, there's a lot of information that is about the industry. But I really thought about the person who is working in stores, probably in a mall somewhere, is maybe as an assistant store manager, a store manager, a district manager, maybe even you know regional. Where do they find information and inspiration about their role? And the reality is there was nothing and that speaks directly to them. 
And so that was my, my voice. I wanted to use my experience because I've done all of those jobs. I started in sales as a young person, young man, and you know, became a vice president of stores. And that was only through hard work. And so that really inspired me and started that journey, um, <clears throat> was published through Scribe Media and uh, in October of 2020. And it, so it's been exactly two years this month. Uh, wow. And it's actually bigger. The book is bigger than ever right now. Um, and part of that is because the message around pride in your work and how you show up and the retail industry, this has never been a more important time. This is the most, I think, in my 30 plus career year career, this is the most exciting time in our industry because it's highly complex. There are a lot of different things that have evolved that were not challenges prior. Lots of new technology, lots of just ev everything is evolving at a very rapid pace. But successful retail starts with people and will, that will never change. And if we can create a movement and around the world of people who are proud of their work and show up every day in stores, that's the best thing we can do for our industry. Absolutely. absolutely. And, and I think to your point, right, so many challenges have come up for the retail industry, for brick and border, that I, I believe now more than ever, to your point, the executive level, right, is really listening to the store employees for ideas, for innovation, for mm -hmm. how do we get closer to the consumer than ever before, right? Because I think retail was in such a, a loop already, right? Like the perfect formula and it was just rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, yeah. right? And now it's totally about innovating and how do you make your store unique and the experience wonderful for the customer? And it, it has to translate beyond the product, right? So I think now right. more than ever, really the book is coming out at a great time, right? It's speaking about that sense of pride and ownership because I believe it translates even beyond work, right? It's about your life, yeah. everything yeah. that you carry forward with it, right? Yep. So with that, um, how, do, how do you listeners today that are hearing us today, how can they approach you? How can they get close to you? How can they see the book? I know you have your own podcast. What is the best yeah. way for them to follow you and what content should they be expecting for you to be putting out consistently? Great. Thanks, Carlos. <clears throat> thanks for asking. So um, LinkedIn, you know, Ron Thurston on LinkedIn is, um, you know, I'm pretty, pretty active on there. Um, and that's sharing my point of view, my inspiration. Uh, my podcast is called Retail in America, and it's almost exclusively done interviews live here in my Airstream trailer where I'm sitting this morning. Uh, so meeting people where they are and having these conversations in person. And the guests have ranged from uh, store managers, district managers, heads of stores, founders, presidents, celebrities, it, there's been a very wide range of people, but with one clear point of view, and that is the power and importance of brick and mortar retail. So that's my number one message is let's showcase the heroes that are doing the hardest work, which is in stores. And that can be at any level. And so that, that and then on Instagram at Retail Pride uh, is just a, also incorporates a lot more of my journey in the Airstream. What does that mean? to live you know, in, an, in an RV? What does this mean for, on a year long journey of traveling and giving up everything in New York and living remotely? That's a whole other part of this journey that is incredibly inspiring and seeing this country and um, living in national parks is something that I would highly encourage people to do. Um, the other piece that I would just mention, Carlos, is mm -hmm. this mission um, is generously supported by several large companies that help make sure that the message is heard loudly. So Ubik, um, which is a large training platform, um, communication tool, they do like micro training is a large global brand um, as a, as a um, title sponsor for the tour. Spotify advertising is the title sponsor and KWI, which is an um, Omni POS integration. Um, let me say that again. Then is an Omni POS solution for for specialty retailers, and so mm -hmm. these brands, with their partnership, have also helped then uh, 
have also helped showcase this work um, and the people in stores. So I am incredibly grateful to have so much uh, so much infrastructure and power behind this tour to make sure that, that people's voices are heard. Wow. No, that's phenomenal to have such great team right behind you. We're, we're only strong as our team, right? Always. It's true. So that's it's beautiful. always true. And as you as you have traveled all over the country, what have you seen as far as when it comes to technology and retail, right? You very well mentioned that those things are coming hand in hand like never before. What do you see in terms of technology as being used the most in retail right now at Brick and Board? Yeah. So I would go back and just mention Ubik again. I think every opportunity that every retailer, that any retailer has to increase the level of communication from headquarters to the field and create ease of training that's easily accessible. Um, they call it kind of micro learnings that there's this constant stream of knowledge coming uh, is a yeah. really incredible way to use technology. And that can be you know, streamed right to someone's phone, to their mobile device, and they're ready to go. So I think that's store communication is a big chunk within technology. It's a POS solutions, this idea of handheld devices and have complete access to your CRM data, have a full understanding at your fingertips of where your customer is, how they're shopping, what their potential purchase history is, how can you get them the product that they need in the fastest way? That is, that's a whole ecosystem in itself around POS. Um, and then I think there's some evolving technologies, things around retail workforce on demand. I'm working with a company called Reflex based in Texas that is uh -huh. starting this um, idea of how do you have a permanent workforce, maybe a smaller permanent workforce within your retail business, but then have on demand talent as needed based on how your business grows or how your workloads change. So it's an incredible tool called Reflex in the technology space. Um, and then, of course, in the clienteling and follow up and CRM management is is a really important part of what's happening in technology. Uh, how do you continue to develop relationships? How do you uh, have great follow up tools? How do you make it as easy as possible for the store, which could include live selling? It could include chat functions. Um, there are a lot of ways that we communicate with our clients. And that can all be done through one technology solution. So the, there's a lot happening in this space, which I think are incredibly exciting. Each part of it serves a different purpose and maybe not all apply to every brand. But where I, I think about this is how will we continue to drive incredible results in a channelless way uh, through the use of technology? And some of that's people, some of that is customer follow-up, some of it is the, the in-store experience. <clears throat> There's a lot of different versions of this. No, absolutely. And, and I think, I don't know if you agree, obviously you've had a lot more experience traveling all over and seeing all these different stores mm -hmm. and talking with, with all these different employees. I think one of the coolest emerging technologies is, is one of the things you mentioned, right? That the live communication between a store employee and a consumer, right? Like I know in my phone, I have like a couple different groups from different employees and they're always texting me and sending me the latest pictures of the, the latest product. So willing to do a FaceTime with me or anything like that. I, I feel like that is the closest way we are connecting with technology and the store employees and us as consumers. Would, would you yeah. agree with that? Or do you think there's something okay. emerging that's more powerful than that? No, I think that's a very powerful tool, Carlos. Um, and maybe chat, you know, I think you're right. It could be FaceTime, live selling, um, easy chat functions, pay by text. There's a lot of that of like, how do we make it as easy as possible for the customer? Wherever, wherever they are, whatever they need, there's a solution to get them their product. And that is, you're right. Some, some people want to always come into the store. Some people want to come into the store sometimes, see things, but then the next six months, they're just texting you and buying inventory. Some people you'll never meet in person. And it's, every customer has their own unique relationship with the brand and the team in the store. And finding the solution that's that covers multiple ways to sell 
I think are the solutions that are best in class. Yeah, no, absolutely. absolutely. And, and do you think from, from a consumer standpoint, having this closer relationship, because I, I don't think ever before I really ever texted with store employees, right? Not, nor was there that openness for them to do the same with me. But it, it makes me feel almost like more valued as a customer, right? You, so I, I think also there's like a psychological aspect where you feel more like a VIP consumer, right? By having that close relationship. Uh, what, what do you think would be another way to kind of in, grow that sector, right? Because I feel regardless of the brand, the more you make your consumer feel like a VIP, the more they want to go back with you, right? Yeah, you're exactly right. And the interesting and I think important evolution of this, this part of our industry is that it should not be dictated by price. So I think what you're describing used to be reserved for the highest end of luxury. And you know, having worked in that space, you know, I understand it. You know, that there are customers who spend millions of dollars a year in a brand and they mm -hmm. do require that level and they do require that really intimate, important converse, conversations, relationships, um, you know, easy, early access to product. There's a lot, but every price point and whether it's a, a sneaker brand, it could be ready to wear, it could be home, it could be art, it could be anything. Um, I love this idea of it being more accessible to all. How do we make everyone feel like they're engaged? And so you may discover a brand on Instagram. I think, well, that's cool. And then you discover that they have a brick and mortar business and you're probably going to their website and checking things out. And then you develop a relationship with someone in the store. So that's this whole idea of no matter how you engage, Maybe you subscribe to their daily emails. Maybe you just follow them on Instagram uh, or maybe you're a customer in the store. Every opportunity to do that is valuable. It also, you know, we live in a time where access to um, and gaining customers and, and retaining customers is harder than ever through social channels. And so therefore the store just plays that much more of an important role in this part of, of, uh, customer acquisition and retention. And that mm -hmm. relationship that you're describing is, uh, is a retention strategy. To, same, like you can't just uh, spend millions of dollars and acquire if you can't retain them. And you retain them through relationship with the brand. Uh, and so I'd love, I'd love that this space is evolving. It's not just separated for luxury and then everyone else gets nothing. This is such a evolving and important and fun part of just the evolution of retail. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and something you spoke to retention, right? I mean, repeat business is business. No repeat business is no business at all. Right. So it's so important right. to retain your customer and to keep them engaged. And one last question I would like to ask you, Ron, and I always ask this of everybody, what would okay. be the one piece of advice for Especially, I want to. I always say for entrepreneurs, but in but in your scenario, I want to talk for store employees, right? I feel like there's always this hunger and this drive they have, right? I mean, I was there. I used to sell shoes. That's how I started in the retail industry. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you have this pride, but you're so lost into what your career path is, right? Like, do yeah. I want to become a store manager, a regional manager? Do I want to try to go to corporate, right? What would be the one piece of advice for all the store employees out there to kind of help them set path? on how to find what they would like to be their forward, you know, career path. My real advice is ask for what you need and find leaders who can provide those resources to you. I think in retail, because it's so often considered accidental or without intention that we settle for it just being good enough, or we don't um, ask for what we need. And we don't say, you know what, I'd really like to have that job. What do I need to do to get there? And surround yourself with great leaders who will help you get there. And I, you know, I credit several people in my career for bringing me forward. And we all have those people in our lives who have seen something in us, who have seen a spark or like you have something unique. Work with people that have that ability because that's how you will grow your career in retail. Seek it out, ask for what you need, be intentional about your career path. Because if you 
consider this to be an accident, you will never truly invest in what you need to get there. You'll always think, well, I have a backup plan. I didn't really ever want to do this. I'm going to do something else. Have an intentional mindset around asking for, have an intentional mindset about asking for what you need to achieve your dreams. Absolutely, Ron. Absolutely. I really, really like that piece of advice. And, you know, so to everybody out there, find a good mentor, right? Find a mentor in the things that you love, find the things that you're passionate about, and then just pursue it, right? Just pursue it because run, you know, it's a proven, proven track record right here that anything is possible. And that no matter if you're selling shoes or selling a piece of apparel, you can make it to becoming the number one best-selling author, you know? So Ron, sure. thank you so much for, for being with us. It was great talking to you and I hope we can meet again, maybe in a year or so, and we can see how the journey has been. If you're ready to go back to New York or if there's going to be a chapter two after all the stories that you've been hearing for all the store employees out there. You never know what's going to happen, Carlos. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much, Ron. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. If you would like to be featured on our podcast, please email us at podcast at retailcorner.live or visit our website, retailcorner.live. Looking forward to having you as our guest on our podcast. And thank you so much for listening.